Hi. In the previous video, we showed the formal proof how to obtain an inverted matrix A. Now, we're going to learn how to apply our knowledge into solving systems of simultaneous equations, of course, by matrix inversion. Okay, and let's start with a very uh, simple case. And this is the system of simultaneous equations that we need to solve. And look, all, first thing we always do in such a case is that we rewrite the system into matrix notation. So we have 4, 3, 2, 5, x, y equals to 28 and 42. Okay, and look, once we've got system uh, in the matrix form, what we can do is to apply five steps that will always lead us to a solution. Okay, let's start with step number one. Find the, the determinant of A. Okay, so look, first thing we do is we simply calculate the determinant of the matrix of coefficient, so our A. Okay, so the, in this case, the determinant can be calculated quite easily as you know, we have 4, 2, 3, 5, and we've got that this is 20, right? Minus 6, which is 14. Now, because this determinant is different than 0, we can be sure that we will have one unique solution. Okay, then uh, we need to go to step number two. Find the matrix of two factors. Okay, so how, how do we do it? Look, we already know how to calculate cofactors, and we will be finding, of course, cofactors uh, for matrix A. Okay, so first thing we do uh, is we know it's going to have four elements, right? So let's start with element C, 1, 1. Okay, how do we find this cofactor? First, we've got negative 1 to the power indicated by the sum of the uh, two indexes, so to the power 1 plus 1 times whatever is left if we delete first row and first column. In our case, this is going to be 5. Okay, we see that this is negative, uh, uh, negative 1 to the power of 2, which is 1, so we get just 5. Okay, then we look for cofactor 1, 2. And look, the order in which I'm doing them is also uh, not coincidental. I put them in exactly the same order as they should be placed uh, in the matrix of cofactors. Okay, so here we will have negative 1 to the power 1 over 2, uh, 1 plus 2. And now, if I delete first row, Second column, what I've got left is 2. So we've got, this is negative 2. Okay, then we look for cofactor 2, 1. So we've got negative 1 to the power 2 plus 1 times if I delete second row, first column, all I've got left is 3. So what I'm obtaining is negative 3. Then, finally, we look for cofactor 2, 2. And so we've got negative 1 to the power 2 plus 2 times. If I delete 
second column, second column, I'm left with 4, and of course negative 1 to the power of 4 is 1, so I'm back with 4. Now I'm ready to write down matrix of cofactors 5, negative 3, negative 2, 4. Okay, at this moment we are ready for step number three, which is transpose matrix, uh, matrix of cofactors. Well, yeah. Okay, so look, all we need to do now is to take this matrix and change and interchange rows and columns. So we change rows into columns or columns into rows, whatever is uh, more pleasant to you. And remember, we will obtain C prime, and this C prime we call adjoint A. Okay, and this is going to be 5, negative 2, negative 3, 4. So, um, I think uh, uh, at this moment we are ready to actually obtain a matrix, inverted matrix A. So find an inverted matrix A. Okay, and look, inverted matrix A is given by 1 over the determinant times adjoint A, right? So, in our case, this is 1 over 14 times 5, negative 3, negative 2, 4. Okay, and at this moment, you might probably wonder. So, okay, it would be quite easy to divide everything out, right? Operationally speaking. But look, the numbers we would get inside this matrix would be horrible, right? It would be very unpleasant to deal with later. So, I strongly recommend for you to keep it in this form. And okay, so this is all that we need. As you will see a little bit later on, this will have another advantage that we can uh, use uh, using the process of solving uh, the system. Okay, so then there's step number five. And the step number five is find the solution. Okay, what we do in this step? Look, I hope you remember that this system of simultaneous equation in matrix notation can be written as A times X equals to D. Now, we said that we want to find X, right? In our case, vector X is a vector with two elements, X and Y. In order to achieve that, we need to divide both sides by A, but we know this is this is not permitted. So what we did is we pre-multiplied both sides by inverted matrix A. So we've got Ix equals to inverted matrix A times D, which is simply equal to X because any matrix, any vector multiplied by identity matrix gives us the same matrix or vector. Right? So this is the solution that we are looking for. Okay, and now there, I'm going to introduce to you something that is not strictly mathematical, but this is something we prefer to do in economics. Every time when we look for vector of solutions, so we want a specific value, values inside vector x, 
we will be adding asterisk. And using this formula, we can always find the solution, well, as long as we have uh, inverted matrix A, right? Okay, so let's do it in our example. Okay, so first, uh, so we've got that vector x, the one that we are looking for. So this will be the vector when we will have some specific value of x and y from our example is given by inverted matrix A times vector D. So vector of exogenous terms or vector of constants, right? So now we just need to substitute all the numbers. And we've got that this is 1 over 14, 5 times negative 3, negative, 5, negative 3, negative 2, 4. And then we've got vector of constant terms 28, 42. And look, maybe your first intuition would be to either multiply this by this, and then what we've got here by this, or multiply this matrix by this vector and then by a scalar. But actually, look, as we said even in the previous video, it really doesn't matter in which order we multiply matrices by a scalar. It does not change the effect. So what we can do, for example, is to multiply out this scalar by this vector. And let's do it. Okay, look, in this case, well, this matrix stays the same. And what will we have here? Uh, 28 multiplied by 1 over 14 is just 2. 42 divided by 14 is just 3. As you see, this has made uh, everything way, way easier. Okay, and the last thing we need to do, of course, is to multiply the two matrices. Of course, we know we can multiply them, and we will get because this one is 2 by 2, this one is 2 by 1, the outcome will be 2 by 1, and this is what we expect, because we wanted to find this vector with just two elements. Okay, so we've got that this is 2, uh, I'm sorry, 5 times 2, okay, uh, let's do it uh, slowly, which is 10, plus negative 3 times 3, so minus 9. Then we've got negative three, uh, negative two times two, which is negative, uh, negative uh, four, plus four times three, which is twelve. Okay, and out of this we get that this is one and eight. Okay, now we've got the solution, but how can we be sure this is a correct solution. Well, of course, we can easily check it by coming back uh, to our system of simultaneous equations. Look, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 times 8, 24, is 28. Then 2 times 1 is 2, plus 5 times 8 is 42. So this is how we know that the solution that we've obtained is a correct one. Okay, so now that we understand the logic of what we are supposed to do when we want to solve system of simultaneous equations uh, using matrix inversion, let's now go to a situation that is slightly more complicated. So let's consider now a system of simultaneous equations well, three simultaneous equations with three unknowns. Okay, so let's just say we've got sine x1 minus x2 minus x3 uh, equals to 0, 10x1 minus 2x2 plus x3 equals to 8, and 6x1 plus 3x2 uh, minus 2 x3 
equals to 7. Okay, of course, first thing we always do, we rewrite this system into matrix notation. Okay, so we start with the matrix of coefficients, we've got this is 7, negative 1, negative 1, 10, negative 2, 1, 6, 3, negative 2. Here we have x1, x2, and x3, and vector of constant terms 0, 8, 7. Okay, and again, we just need to go through five-step procedure that we've described previously. Well, the first step, clearly, we need to find the determinant. Okay, so determinant here is going to be, okay, maybe, uh, I'm not going to be rewriting, I'm just going to calculate it right away. So we've got 7 times negative 2 times negative 2, so we've got, this is 28, right? Then we've got negative 1 times 1 times 6, which gives us minus 6. Then we've got negative 1, 10, and 3, which gives us uh, a negative 30. Okay, and then we go in the opposite direction. 6 times negative 2 times negative 1, it is 12. And remember, when we go up, we put minus up front, so this is going to be negative 12. Okay, then we've got 3 times 1 times 7, which is 21, but with minus up front. Okay, and uh, finally, the last one, we've got negative 2, negative 1, and 10, which gives us 20, with minus up front, that's negative 20. Okay, so now we need to add all those things up. Uh, so out of this we've got, out of this we've got negative 2, right? Negative 8, negative 20, negative 40, negative 61. Okay. Because we've got negative 61, we know that this is different than 0. So again, we will have one unique solution. Okay. What we need to do now is to go to step number two. And step number two is to find matrix of cofactors. Well, this step in this case will be a little bit more troublesome. But uh, this is unfortunately what we always need to do. Okay, so we start by finding the cofactors. Okay, so we start by finding the factor C11. Okay, we start with negative 1 to the power indicated by the sum of indices, and then we put what we've got left if I delete first row, first column. So negative 2, 1, 3, negative 2. Right? This is the determinant. Okay, and look, out of this, I'm going to just get 1. And now I've got 4 minus 3, which is 1. So the first element is just 1. Okay, then let's go to cofactor 1, 2. So again, we start with negative 1 to the power 1 plus 2. And, uh, and uh, now we need to delete first row. Second column. So we've got this is 10, 6, 1, negative 2. Right? Okay, so we got out of this we get negative 1, right? Because negative 1 to the power of 3. And then we've got negative 20 minus 6 is negative 26 times negative 1. It's 20. Six. Okay, then we go to cofactor one, three. 
Again, it's going to be negative 1 to the power 1 plus 3. And if I delete first row, third column, I'm going to be left with 10, 6, negative 2, and 3. Of course, here we could use some properties of determinant, you know, take 3 out of here, take 2 out of here. Uh, but let's be honest, this is so trivial that we don't need to actually use it right now. Okay, out of this, we are going to get 1, and now we've got 30 plus 12. It's 42. Uh, as you see, this is going to be a little bit more complicated task uh, than before, but still, I hope you can see very manageable. Okay, then we get to the second one. So now we look for cofactor 2, 1. So we, again, we start negative 1 to the power 2 plus 1. And now, if I'm going to delete Second row, first column, what I got is negative 1, negative 1, uh, 3, negative 2. Okay, here, again, I have, here I have 3, negative 1 to the power 3, it's going to be negative 1, and here I have 2 plus 3, right, because there's minus in front, so we've got 2 plus 3, this is 5, so we get that this is negative 5. Okay, then we look for cofactor 2, 2. Negative, we get that this is negative 1 to the power 2 plus 2. And now, if I'm going to delete second row and second column, I'm left with 7, 6, negative 1, negative 2. Okay, and look, now this is negative 14 plus 6, which is negative 8. And of course, because we have 1 in front, this is negative 8. Okay, now we look for cofactor 2, 3. And this gives us, uh, so here we've got negative 1 to the power 2 plus 3. And then... <coughs> And then, uh, so we need to delete second row, third column. What we have left uh, is 7, negative 1, 6, 3. Okay, we will have negative 1 out of this. Here we've got 27 and uh, plus, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 21 plus 6 is 27. Sorry, I, I, I did it. Too fast, and we put minus uh, up front. Finally, we can go to the third row. And in the third row, uh, we will have, we, we start with cofactor C31, so this is negative 1 to the power 3 plus 1. And now, if I delete uh, third row, first column, what I got left is negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, 1. Okay, so out of this we're going to just get just 1. Here we have negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. Okay, and then we've got cofactor uh, 3, 2. So, here we have negative 1 to the power 3 uh, plus 2. And if I'm going to delete third row, second column, what I got is 7, 10, negative 1, and 1. Okay, so out of this I'm getting 7 plus 10, uh, 7 plus 10, which is, uh, 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 which is 17. With minus in front, it's negative uh, 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 seven, 7 plus, uh, negative 17. Okay, I'm sorry because I, I, I'm not sure if there was a minus here. Wait, 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 wait because I've written it very badly. And this is very important. You cannot miss anything. It was negative 14 plus 6 
it's negative eight. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then we've got C three, three. Okay. And uh, so we get out of this. That this is negative one to the power three plus three. And now if I do third row, third column, I'm gonna get seven negative one, ten negative two. And this gives me one, this gives me negative 14 plus 10, negative 4. Okay, look, oh, finally, we can write down the matrix of cofactors. Okay, let me write down this matrix of cofactors here. And this matrix of cofactors is 1, negative 5, Negative 3, 26, 8, and 26, negative 8, negative 17, 42, negative 27, and negative 4. Okay, now before we go to the next step, I want to show you a couple of tricks that we can use to do this a little bit faster. Let's notice a very simple thing. Over here, over here, uh, let me get just two different colors. And uh, over here, I'm having negative one to the power one plus one. So this gives me plus, right? And, over here to the power of 3, minus. Over here, plus again. So, look, because we always, when I move along the row, so I'm moving, when I move along the row, so there's another column and another column, we always add one. So we expect we will always get plus, minus, plus, if we would have a bigger system of simultaneous equation, it would be minus, plus, minus, plus, dg. But look, the same pattern also works when we go down, right? Because here we've got to the power 1 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 3 plus 1. So we will have minus up front. Here we will have plus. And, the, and so it works in every direction. We will always have minus up front here plus from here. If we have minus here and minus here, there will be plus here, and we will have minus over here. Then over here must be plus, and over here minus. So look, the sign, algebraic sign ascribed to the minor within the cofactor in two adjacent cofactors it's always opposite. It will always be plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. And the same here. It doesn't matter in which direction. Okay, and look, this actually should help you a lot because instead of writing this all the time, you can just write plus, minus, plus. Then minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. It will work all the time. Uh, doesn't matter how big is the system of simultaneous equations because the logic behind this is exactly the same. Okay, so let's go back to our system of simultaneous equations. What do we need to do now? Well, now what we need to do is to find adjoint A and adjoint A is simply transposed matrix C. So I am transposing this matrix and I'm getting that this is 1, 26, uh, 42, negative 5, negative 8, oops, negative 8, negative 27, negative 3, negative 17, negative 4. Okay, and now we are very close to solution because we can right away write the matrix A 
an inverted matrix A, which is equal to 1 over the determinant times adjoint A is equal to 1 over uh, 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 is equal to 1 over negative 61 times 1 26 42 negative 5 negative 8 negative 27 negative 3 negative 17 negative 4 okay and we are almost done the, the last thing uh, we need to do uh, over here uh, uh, is to simply uh, find the solution, right? Okay, let me. I, I wanna. Let, let, let me just try to find it over here. Okay, so um, because I don't wanna erase that at this moment because uh, if I make even a tiny mistake here, I will not get the correct solutions, right? So better to keep it for a while because if we will get a wrong solution it will be very very easy to find okay so and so what uh, what do we do next okay so we are finding the solution so vectors of solutions is given by 1 over the determinant so negative 61 times 1 uh, 26, 42, negative 5, negative 8, negative 27, negative 3, negative 17, negative 4. Okay, this time uh, times vector d, uh, vector d, 0, 8, 7. Traditionally, by multiplying matrix by vector. Okay, so 1 times 0 is 0, negative 5 times 8 is negative 40, uh, negative 5 times 8 is negative 40, negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. Okay, then we've got 26 times 0. Negative 8 times 8, which is uh, negative 64, and then we've got negative 17 uh, uh, times 7, uh, which is negative uh, 70 plus 49, negative 119. Uh, okay, give, give me, uh, sorry, 17 plus, yeah, yeah, everything checks out. Okay, then uh, we've got 42 times 0, okay. then we've got 27, negative 27 times 8, negative 20 is 100, okay, negative 160 uh, minus uh, 7 times 8, negative 56, and then we've got negative 4 times 7, which is negative uh, 28. Okay, now we've got this is 1 over negative 61 times. Out of this, we get negative 61, which should tell us quite a lot even at this moment because we will get just one over here so at least uh, at least in this row no mistakes okay then I've got negative 183 which again points me to the conclusion that we are moving in the right direction okay and now this is uh, 100, this is negative 216, 
minus 28, uh, it, mm, it's 200 and uh, 44, negative 244. Okay, and now look, if I divide everything, each element by negative 61, I'm getting that this is 1, 3, and 5. Okay, but again, better be safe, let's just check if the solution actually works. Negative 7, uh, I'm sorry, 7 uh, times 1 is 7, 7 minus, uh, uh, 7 minus, uh, uh, 7 minus 3, Seven minus three uh, is uh, seven. Uh, seven minus three. Uh, uh, oh my God! I'm sorry. Seven minus three uh, is so one. Okay. Now I think we might have a mistake somewhere because it's one three five, and it probably should be one two. One, three. Oh my god, of course. And this is not five, this is four. Oops. My bad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry for the stupid mistake over here. Okay, yeah, obviously, uh, this, is, this is four, not five. I don't know how did I came up with this. Okay, now it makes perfect sense. We've got seven minus three minus four, zero. Then we've got. 10 minus 6 minus uh, 10 uh, minus 6 plus 4, 8, and then uh, we've got uh, we've got 6 uh, plus 9 minus 4, 7. Okay. This is how we uh, how we solve systems of simultaneous equations by matrix inversion. Of course, I know that it might seem very complicated the first time you do it. Well, definitely, there is a lot of place for, to make a stupid mistake. Well, like the one I did over here. Well, because this number clearly. Uh, uh, divides into five knots and <laughs> not to four. Uh, but look, if you make on the exam, if you make a tiny stupid mistake like that, maybe I'm gonna take away some of your points, but I'm not gonna take away too much. But remember, this is something you will not learn, you know, just by listening to me. I could show you how the procedure works at every step, but you need to practice it. Once you've solved 20 systems of simultaneous equations by matrix inversion, you will know how to do it for the rest of your life. Will you? This is how many times I did it when I was a student. I never had to re relearn it. Okay, in the next video, I will show you a different method of solving systems of simultaneous equations that you're gonna like a lot more because it's way easier. But unfortunately, you need to know both. Why? Look, the method you uh, called matrix inversion is extremely important in statistics. We use the second one in economics when we calculate different economics models. But matrix inversion is fundamental to statistics and you need to know how to do it. Okay, thank you for your attention, and in the next video, we're gonna discuss Kramer's point.